Hey everyone, this is Rob with Codecademy. I'm a software developer based out of Seattle, Washington. In this video, we're going to walk through the C-sharp project, true or false. So far, we've learned the basics of working with loops in C-sharp. Loops are commonly used because they save time, reduce errors, and are easy to read. To complete this project, you'll need to be familiar with how to create instructions once, then use loops to run those instructions multiple times, how to use for each to loop through every item in an array, and finally, how to repeat a loop until a condition changes with the while loop. All right, let's get started. Okay, in this program, we can imagine that we're taking an interactive quiz. We're asked the question, eggplants are a type of berry, and then as a user, we're prompted to answer true or false. In this situation, we answer yes. Yes, because by botanical definition, eggplants really are a type of berry. However, in the simulation, that score is recorded as incorrect, even though as a player, I knew what the answer was. So we want our application to look at the user's input, and if it comes across in an unexpected format, we want to ask the question again to get the user to provide the answer in the right format. And we'll repeat the question with a prompt until the user provides the answer in the right format that we're looking for. And then finally, after our quiz is complete, we'll go ahead and check the user's responses against the correct answers and present a score. So in this example, we see that the user responds to the question with yes. And so they are prompted again to answer the question, but to answer with true or false. Okay, let's get started with setting up our arrays. We need an array to hold our questions. This is going to be of type string, and we'll name it questions. So let's we'll set this equal to new string, and now we'll provide our questions for our array. If you had any trouble thinking of true or false questions, you're free to use mine. Okay, let's go ahead and mark step one as complete. And now in step two, we're going to go ahead and declare an answers array. This is going to be of type bool, and we'll name it answers. And this is going to contain the answers to our questions. So let's we'll set this equal to new bool. And the answer to our first question is true. The answer to our second question is true, followed by false, false, and true. OK, let's mark step two as complete, and we'll move on to step three. We want to declare a responses array. This is going to be of type bool. And this is going to be the user's responses, which we haven't recorded yet. So we just want to make sure that our responses array is the same length as the questions array. So new bool, and we'll pass in questions. And on that array, we'll use the length property to get the length. Now I like to test my code to make sure that things are working as I would expect. So I'm going to go ahead and write to the terminal the length of our questions array and the length of our responses array. And we'll save my code, and we'll run it in the terminal with .NET run. We're prompted to press Enter to begin, and perfect. Both arrays are of length 5. Now I'll go ahead and delete these lines of code as we only had them in there for testing. And let's mark step 3 as complete. Now step 4 is going to be some code that we're going to implement to avoid any errors that might occur later on. We'll write an if statement. We just want to create a condition that checks if questions.length is not equal to answers.length. We're doing this just to make sure that we always have the correct amount of answers for the amount of questions that were asked. If for some reason this isn't equal, then we're going to write a message to the terminal console.write line warning the number of answers supplied does not match the number of questions. So we can test this out by going to our answers array. I'm going to comment out one of the answers. We'll save our code. I'm going to clear the terminal. And we'll run our program again. Press Enter to begin. And we get our message. Warning, the number of answers supplied does not match the number of questions. Perfect. OK, I'll uncomment out this answer in our answers array. And we'll mark step four as complete and move on to step five. We're ready to loop through our questions array to ask our player 
our questions. So first, let's go ahead and create a variable of type int. This is going to be asking index. And we're going to set it to a value of 0. This is going to keep track of our currently asked question. So let's mark step 5 as complete, and we'll move on to step 6. We'll go ahead and build an empty for each loop that's going to iterate through each question in questions. So we'll say type string of question in our array of questions. And now we have an empty for each loop that iterates through each question in our questions. So we can mark step 6 as complete and move on to step 7. Before we get to asking questions, we need to define some empty variables. First, the text the user enters. This will be of type string, and we'll name our variable input. So when the user responds to the question, we'll capture it as a string and save it to the variable input. Next, a bool is bool, and this will be set to true if the user input can be converted to a boolean, otherwise false. So when they provide that string, when the user provides input, it's in the type of string. If that string can be converted to a boolean, then this will be true. So if the user provides the string yes, yes is not going to be converted to the boolean true, so it would be false. We'll see how this is done in a moment. And then finally, a bool input bool. And this will be the boolean version of the user's entry. So if their entry can be converted to a boolean, this is where we'll store the value as true or false. OK, let's mark step 7 as complete and move on to step 8. We're going to ask the question once. In the loop, we're going to print the current question to the console. So console.writeLine, and we'll pass in question. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is running as we would expect. I'll clear out the terminal and save our code. and then run our code. OK, perfect. It looks like all five of our questions are being printed out to the terminal. I'm going to open up this space just a little bit to make this more readable in our terminal. OK, then after each question, we want to prompt them with the information that we're going to want from them. So we'll console.writeLine true or false. OK, I'm going to go ahead and clear out the terminal. And we want to be sure to capture the user's input. So we'll save this to our variable input. And we'll set it equal to console.readline. Awesome. OK, let's mark step 8 as complete. And we'll move on to step 9. We now want to capture if the user's input can be converted to a Boolean. So if they provide an answer true, that string can be converted to the Boolean true. If they provide an answer of yes, that string is not going to be converted to a boolean of true. So let's look at how we can do this. We can use the triparse method. In our example, we can see that the triparse method is going to take two arguments. A string value, in our case input, whether the user says true, yes, false, no, and then a bool variable to store the converted string. It's going to return true if the conversion was successful, and false if otherwise. So let's go ahead and implement this. We'll save to our is bool the value of boolean. And we'll call the triparse method. Now we'll take the string that the user provides of input and a bool variable to store the converted string. Input bool. Perfect. So if the user says true, then input bool will be true and is bool will be set to true. If the user says yes for their input, then input bool will become false, and is bool will be set to false. OK, so let's move on to step 10. At this point, our program is going to ask each question once and then doesn't do anything with the response. Let's run our code to make sure that this is what we're experiencing on our end. So I'll say no. Yes, yep, true, no way. So we can say yes, no, yes, no, yes. And then our program simply ends. 
So now we want to work on creating a check. If the user hasn't provided the answer in the right format, we want to prompt them to answer the question again and remind them of what we're looking for. So let's mark step 10 is complete and we'll move on to step 11. So this is going to still be inside of our for each loop. We'll say while is bool is false. So if they have said yes instead of true or no instead of false, then we want to do the following. Let's mark step 11 is complete and move on to step 12. We want to print a message, please respond with true or false. So console dot write line, please respond with true or false. Now that we've done that, we want to capture their input again, and we'll save this to the variable input. So console.readLine. And then we want to repeat this line of code, again, to make sure that they've provided a value that can be converted into a Boolean. OK, let's save our code. We'll clear out our terminal, and we'll run our program again. Let's give an answer in the incorrect format. We'll say yes. And we're prompted to respond, please respond with true or false. So let's say true. And we move on to the next question. Perfect. I'll go ahead and exit the program and clear our terminal. And let's mark step 12 as complete and move on to step 13. At this point, our while loop is complete. It's going to repeatedly ask for input until the user's input can be successfully parsed as a Boolean. So outside of our while loop, but still inside of our for each loop, let's store the user's Boolean answer and responses in increment asking index by one. So responses at the asking index will be set to input bool. And then asking index will be incremented by one. This will make sure that we've stored the user's responses to the corresponding questions. We'll mark step 13 as complete and move on to step 14. Great job so far. The asking part of our quiz is over. So let's go ahead and test our code to make sure that those responses are being recorded. So outside of our for each loop, let's go ahead and print out the values of the user responses. So for each bool response in responses, we will console.writeLine response. Let's save our code, and then let's run our code. And we'll say true, false, true, false, and true. And we can see that we're, they're recorded right here, true, false, true, false, true. Awesome. OK, let's mark step 14 is complete. And now that we've tested our code, we can remove this for each loop. Let's move on to step 15. We're going to work on calculating our score. Now that our user has responded to all of our questions, we can compare the responses with the answers. So first, we'll start by defining a few variables. Scoring index of type int. We're going to set this initially to 0. And then another variable of type int. Score will set to 0. So let's mark step 15 is complete. And then in step 16, we want to create an empty for each loop. For each. And this is going to iterate through each answer. So the type of bool, answer in our answers array. So we have our empty for each loop. Let's mark step 16 as complete. And in step 17, we're going to capture the response matching the answer. So we'll create a variable of type bool. And we'll go ahead and just call this response. And we'll set this equal to our responses array at the index of scoring index, which is 0 as we start our for each loop. OK, let's mark step 17 is complete. And in step 18, we're going to write out the user response and correct answer for each answer in answers. We want the format to look like this, the number for the question, the text input, and then what the user provides, a pipe 
to separate the input from answer and the correct answer to the question. Well, let's go ahead and do this. Console.write. I'm using console.write instead of console.write line because I don't want a new line to automatically occur after the question number. So I'll say scoring index plus one plus this period and a space to get the correct formatting. And then a console.write line. And then we'll use string interpolation input and then the value for response. And remember, response is going to be set equal to our responses array at the scoring index. So this starts off at 0. So the user response at index 0 of the array responses. And then a pipe and the text answer and the value for answer. And this will be the item that we're currently iterating through in our array. All right, let's save our code. And let's clear the terminal. And let's run our code. And we'll say true, false, true, false, and true. So we can see that we're almost there. We're running into an issue that we're repeating the number 1 every time. And also, we're displaying true every time as well. And if you did get stuck there, the reason this is occurring is because we aren't incrementing scoring index. So we're looking at the same value in our responses array. And the same number is being repeated when we're trying to list our question number. So we'll address that in a further step. So let's clear the terminal. And mark step 18 is complete. And in step 19, we want to add to the user's score if the response matches the answer. So we'll say if response equals answer, then we're going to increment the score by 1. So we can mark step 19 as complete. And in step 20, we can deal with that little bug that we noticed. We'll increment scoring index by 1 as well. At this point, our for each loop should print out the user responses and answers and calculate a score. So outside of our for each loop, we want to print out a message that matches this format. You got four out of five correct. So we can do this with console.writeLine. And then we'll use string interpolation. You got score out of and then we could say five because we know we asked five questions, but we can make this more dynamic by saying questions dot length. Correct. Okay, let's go ahead and save our code. And let's run it in the terminal. And we'll say true, false, true, false, true. Perfect. We can see our questions going up by one each time in the results. And we can see that the user input is being displayed correctly. And then finally, our total score. You got three out of five correct. Awesome. Well, mark step 21 is complete and move on to step 22. You did a great job on building out this app. You could go ahead and run this a few more times to make sure that it's handling the user input correctly and calculating user scores as you would expect. And if your app isn't running right, always be sure to check the hints for some troubleshooting tips. If you want to extend your work, you could deal with the case of wanting to make multiple quizzes. At this point, you would have to type out your code multiple times. And that's a lot of code. So we could fix this by refactoring your code into a method that you could call run quiz that takes two arguments. The first argument would be a string array of the questions, and then the second argument would be a Boolean array of the answers. Writing this would save you a lot of time if your desire was to create multiple quizzes. All right, great job in this project. We were able to harness the power of loops to write instructions once and run them multiple times, whether you're intending those instructions to run on every item in an array or desiring those conditions to run while a certain condition was true. Great job. This is Rob with Codecademy. Happy coding.